Hello LaunchCart users, this is Joshua and in today's video I'm going to teach you how to create a manual product. To do this, just go to your products tab and click on add a product. Now when this box opens up, it's going to ask you which type of product do you want to create? Do you want to create a product from scratch, which is what we'll be doing in this video, or do you want to create a print on demand product, or do you want to look through our design marketplace? Now we have videos on each one of these sections, but in today's video, we'll be creating a brand new product from scratch. So let me walk you through how easy this is. Now this is perfect for someone who is uh, shipping out their own products and someone who has to input all of their product details manually. Now something uh, at time when you would not do this is if you're creating print on demand products, most of these fields that we'll walk through today will automatically be filled out by your print on demand uh, vendor by the person who, who is actually shipping out and producing your products. But once again, for today's video, I'm gonna walk you through this page and I'm gonna show you and teach you about all the different fields and options that are available to you when you create a product from scratch. So let's get right into it. First, you'll need to give your product a name. Now, I'm just gonna put in shoes and I'm gonna basically run through these options pretty fast so this video is not super long, but this product name is gonna show up on your storefront. This is what your customers will see when they browse and buy this product is they'll see this product name. Next, you have your SKU. This is for inventory keeping. Uh, if you do not have a SKU, you can leave this blank. Now, one thing I'll say as we progress down this page is you don't need to have all of the information right away. So if you're missing some of this stuff that we'll talk about today, it's okay. You can save this product as a draft right here. You can set the product status to draft and you can come back and you can edit this product whenever you're ready. Then when you're ready to publish it live so it's viewable on your store, you can switch this to active and then save the page. Okay, so every product can either be active, which means it's active on your website and it's publicly available or it can be in draft mode, which means that it's private and you can continue to edit it and nobody will see those changes, or it's inactive, which means that it's not available on your site anymore, um, but you may have filled out all of the, uh, the fields already. Okay, so that's product statuses. Now, as we continue go, to go down the page, we have product descriptions. This is where you want to describe your product and you really want to be in depth. You want to give dimensions, you want to give maybe some um, bullet points, you want to give some benefits of why the visitors should purchase this product. This is basically your main salesy area. So you want to be really in depth with your product descriptions. To the right of that, on the sidebar, we have categories. So this is where you want to assign this product to. Which area of your store do you want to assign this product to? Now maybe this is a men's shoe. So I'm going to change my title to men's shoes. And I'm going to assign this to the men's category and to the shoes category. Now, if you don't have any categories here, there's two ways to create these. And we have a video on this. You can either go to the category section and create your categories there, or you can create your categories right from within the product builder. You simply open this up. You give it a uh, category name, a description. You choose a parent category if you want it to be a subcategory or you leave this blank and this will become a parent category and then you can change your SEO information down here. But I don't need to do this because we already have some categories created. So I'm just going to assign this product to the correct category. This also allows your visitors to browse your site and it allows them to search through all the different categories so they can find the products that, that they're looking for. So we highly recommend categories and uh, once again, you don't need to do this now, but you should at least assign your products to categories at some point. Okay, let's keep going down. Now, the next big box we have is our pricing box. Let me walk you through these three different boxes. So your priced is how much is this going to be charged to the customer? So for this particular example, we're going to charge $29.95. Now, your compare at price is the price. Uh, this is an optional box we can fill out here, but this should be higher than your price. So this might be $45. And what happens is when you add a compare at price, it's basically going to show your product as having a sale. It's going to basically say, listen, a lot of retailers on the internet, they're usually selling the same product for $45, but you're getting it here on my website for $29.95. So this is a good option to show your visitors what this same product would go for elsewhere you put that number here. 
And then you have an optional uh, box to add your cost. So what is your actual cost of this product? And maybe your cost is, let's say it's $19. Okay, so $19 is what I buy the shoes for. I sell them for $29.95 and they retail elsewhere for $45. Okay, the next option we have is to enable tax calculation. Now, if you need to charge taxes, then you should enable this box. Now, this box doesn't really do anything yet unless you have a custom tax rule created. So we have a whole video on creating tax rules. But what this box does is it basically tells the launch cart system that you should or should not be calculating taxes for this product. For example, let's say the visitor adds three products to their cart and they go to checkout on your store and only one of those products has this box checked off. That means that that particular product out of the three will calculate taxes and the others will not. So it's very important that you have this on if you do want to uh, enable taxes, but you will also have to create a custom tax rule at least later on, somewhat soon, before this will take effect and do anything. Okay, if you don't have any tax rules created and this box is enabled, nothing will happen when the uh, customer checks out, meaning that there will not be any taxes charged on this product. However, if you do have tax rules already created and this box is unchecked, then once again, the user or the customer will not get tax charged when they buy this product. So that's how this works. I usually like to have this uh, turned on and then my tax rules will specify at what tax rate and how much my customers will get charged. Okay, so let's go on to the sidebar on the right hand column now. Now we have product type, vendor, and tags. So your product type, these are all optional but they're very useful because some of these elements will show up in your themes and they'll allow your visitors to search by product type. They'll also allow you, the admin, when you're browsing your product catalog internally in your dashboard, you'll be able to search via product type, via vendor, and via tag. So we might assign this product to our shoes product type, or maybe it's apparel, or maybe it's men's apparel, but you'll want to assign this to a particular topic. Uh, your vendor, who's the vendor? Is this uh, a third party? Is this uh, your particular company? Put in your vendor name here. Where do you get these products from? And then tags. So tags are things like shoes, footwear, at least, you know, whatever relates to this product, you put those here. And once again, these might be visible in your theme. They, may not, they might not be. Um, and then you could also use these tags when you're, um, you know, going through your product catalog within your dashboard. So these are very helpful to be turned on. They are optional, but we do recommend that you add these. Okay, let's continue down to the media section. So this is where you would upload any types of photos, videos, 3D renderings, or YouTube videos of your product. So to do that, you, cl you click on the add media uh, box right here, and you can basically uh, pick a file from your computer to upload here. So let me go ahead and do that right now. I am going to upload a product image right now. So I'm browsing my computer right now for some product images. So here we go. And I'm gonna upload just some pictures of the shoes and I'm gonna select about four different images and upload those all at once. Okay, so we've uploaded four images. Now if I wanted to, I could upload some video files. I could upload what are called OBJ files, which are 3D renderings, which when uh, shown on your storefront would allow the visitor to basically have a 3D model of your product. So we support basically all types of different uh, image you know, types, video file types. You can also embed a public YouTube video by clicking here and inputting your YouTube video URL. Okay, now you will see that we have a few things going on here. We have what's called the feature um, tag right here. Any image in this big left-hand section is going to be your featured image. This is the image that people are going to see on the thumbnails, and this is going to be the first image that loads when they view this product on your store. So you can click and you can drag an image to the featured spot, and it will become the new featured image. Once somebody is on your product page and they're viewing this product, they'll see the featured image first, and then they'll be able to click and view the other 
resources that you have here. Okay, let's continue on to the other options we have here. Next, we have inventory. This is once again optional, but it allows you to track inventory and use LaunchCart to basically track when your products are in stock and when they're out of stock and then what happens. So let's say I do want to track inventory and let's say I only have 10 pairs of these shoes to sell. I would input the number 10 here. And then as LaunchCart sells, or as your visitors buy from your LaunchCart store, this number would get lower and lower. For example, if you sell five pairs, this number would automatically change to five, and so on and so on. Then you have some different options down below. Let me explain these. So when you're tracking inventory, you can tell the LaunchCart system what to do when it runs out of stock, when your customers buy up all the available inventory. Your first option is to continue selling when out of stock. That means that you can actually go into the negative. This is very helpful if you're somebody who sells products and you continually get new shipments of those products and you never want to stop selling. You can have this box checked and basically it will start lowering the numbers and then it will actually get into the negative and you'll have negative amounts here. And then eventually when you um, you know, get more shipments of those products in here, you can log back into your launch cart admin panel and you can change the quantity to have how, however many you have. Okay, the next option you can have uh, set is to stop selling this product and allow visitors to get notified via email when this is back in stock. So this is a really cool feature. What happens is if you select this middle option here, when a visitor goes to your product page and they try to order a product that is out of stock, they will see an option to input their email address and subscribe for updates. Next time you change the quantity and you update um, and you put more stock in your inventory section, it will send out an email to everybody who has been waiting to be notified and it will tell them that, hey, we have more products available. It will give them a link to come back to your store and buy. And it's all automatic. The third option is to stop selling this product and do not allow visitors to get notified. So. Maybe you have a limited release. Maybe you're only selling 10 pairs permanently. And when you're out, you're out. And there's nothing that can be done about that. That's when you would choose this option. For me, I like to go ahead and either choose one of these two options. If I know that I'm going to continue to get inventory no matter what, I'll choose the first option. If I'm not sure when I'm going to get new inventory of this product when it becomes out of stock, I'll choose the second option because I always want to allow people to get notified and basically subscribe for updates. Okay, let's scroll down. The uh, next option we have is shipping. If you are shipping this product out and if you are charging a shipping rate, you'll need to have this box turned on. Once again, this is like taxes. This setting tells the system that uh, it will need to calculate shipping rates for your customers. Then you can add in the optional weight and the weight amount. So maybe my weight for this product is one pound or maybe it's uh, 32 ounces. You see how you could select the different variables here. Okay. Now, once again, just like taxes, you'll need to create a custom shipping rule for all of your products and you can do that later, but you at least need to have this checked. So the system knows that it should be checking for your shipping rules and uh, using the correct shipping rates when your customer buys this product. Once again, we have videos on how to create shipping rules. You can look at those um, at our additional resources. Okay, let's go down to this one. This is called variants, and this is very useful if you are selling similar products. For example, let's say you're selling shoes, like our example, but you have different types of shoes. You have small shoes, or I'm sorry, this would be your size. You have small shoes, you have large shoes, and you have extra large. Now I know those aren't typical shoe sizes. Really what they would be is they'd be something like, you know, 10.5, 11, 12, and 12.5. Maybe that's better for our example. And then maybe you have different colors that these shoes comes in. Well, you would add another option. This would be your color option. And then you would input your maybe black shoes, white shoes, and gray shoes. When you hit enter, it does something magical. As we scroll down the page, we have a brand new table that showed up here. This is our variant table. And what happens is, is it creates variants and it allows you to manipulate all the different variables now for each one of your individual products. Because now we have a 10 and a half black shoe. We have 11 
size black version, a 12 black version, and so on and so on. And you can scroll down, you can see we have a whole bunch of different products now. Now we have actually 12 unique products the customer can buy. Now if I wanted to, I could go ahead and customize each one of these variants with their supporting images. So for all of my black shoes, I might change um, and I might upload black thumbnails here or black product images. For my white shoes, I would click on the edit icon and I would select different white colored product images and so on and so on. If we scroll, we can see that we do have other options. So we can add digital downloads for each one of these. Maybe um, this is not a great example because I'm selling shoes, but what if you wanted to sell ebooks? Well, you could sell different types of ebooks, and for every ebook they buy, you would upload the corresponding PDF right here. Then we have the weight column. This is where you'd input the different weights. If each one of these had a different weight for shipping, you could input those here. You could input a different SKU. You could input a different inventory amount. So let's say the size black 11 shoe, you only have three of. Well, you could put three here and leave the rest the same. Then you have your inventory settings that we just talked about earlier, but for each individual product. So um, some other options you have is your pricing. So maybe for your smalls or for your 10 and a half, in this case, maybe your pricing is cheaper than your uh, 12 and a half. So those are your large sizes, so maybe those are more expensive. So you can basically manipulate all the different variables for all the different uh, variants here. You can also deactivate some, so if you don't want to sell certain versions, you can deactivate these and only allow others ones to be active. It's totally up to you. Um, the next option is product attributes. Now this is um, only useful to a very small select of people, but it allows you to basically enable certain extra fields on your product page that your customers can fill out. Uh, and I'm not going to get into this because it's a very small segment of people who use this and we'll do a whole separate video on just attributes alone, but I'm going to skip this for now because this video is already going a little bit long and I just want to make sure you're aware of everything that's available in your product editor. Okay. The very last thing is your search engine optimization. Now, what this does is it's automatically going to pull in your page title, but you still need to give a description. And you also have the option to change the page URL structure as well down here. So we recommend uh, maybe doing a little bit of SEO research or at least putting in a few extra keywords in your page title and then putting similar keywords in a short description in your meta description for every product. This is going to be what's sent to Google and Bing and all the other search engines so they can index your site, index your product pages, and they know exactly what your page is about. But other than that, that's about it. Um, and I can, I'll show you one more thing. If you don't have variants, let me delete these. I'm gonna turn these variants off again. If you don't have variants, you can skip this whole variants box. And I just want to show you that digital downloads is right here, it's moved. Um, the reason it's moved is because we no longer need to select different uh, downloads for every variant. We just need to select downloads for our one single product. So I just want to make sure that you know how that works. And you can upload 10 files um, per product and variant with a one gigabyte file size. So we support very large files here. And that's basically it. So once you fill out everything here, let me put in some extra text here. Uh, once you put in your title, your description, your prices and your images, you're pretty much ready to go. A lot of this stuff is optional on this page, but then you just need to save the page. And now if this product is set as active under the product status here, this product is now available to be sold on your website. And when people order it, uh, you can start shipping out this product and you're good to go. So that's how easy it is, folks. It's so, so simple to do. And um, this is actually probably the hardest thing um, when it comes to adding products is doing a manual product because you're required to fill out all of those options individually But don't let it be over complicated if you don't have some of this stuff ready Just save it as a draft You can find all your draft products in your draft section right here and you can edit these whenever you like see look Here's another one that I was editing um, You can come back here and you can edit them and you can continue to update change and do whatever you want and then when you're ready to go live just change it to active and resave and you're good to go. I'm Joshua. Stay tuned for the next video.